Disasters and accidents could happen at any moment, but the chances of survival increase when you know what to do. From getting out of quicksand to how to float using your pants, here are the best survival tips you must know if you want to live. If you like the video, click the subscribe button and in the comments, tell us what life hacks have you used. And for some extra fun, find our mascot net hiding throughout the video. No drowning pants here. A Navy sailor who was on an aircraft carrier and fell into the water was found alive and somewhat well after two days adrift in the ocean. I have to say, thank goodness no hungry critters were around. Well, besides him. But it was no luck that saved him, but his training. He used a technique called drown proofing. Here's how it goes. First, after calming yourself down, you must remove your pants, zip them up, and put the button. Second, you can either tie the ankle parts of your pants together or individually. Whatever is easier for you. This really does depend on the material and your strength. Then, here is the exercise part. You're going to have to fling them hard enough for the legs to be filled with air. And right after, get the waistband underwater and hold it so that the air does not escape. Now, after a while, the air will escape and you should actually blow into both trouser legs to keep them inflated. And that should do it. Now, it's just a matter of waiting. One missing. So, you have to light a flashlight and you are missing one of the batteries. Well, that's very unfortunate. Not really. All you need is either a nail long enough to fit the empty spot or use aluminum foil. And voila! Tagging all alone. If you have pets, it's always important to have a plan of action if disaster ever occurs. An old Chinese man I met on a walk told me that his older dog had passed away when he was taken to an emergency room and had to be away for a couple of days. Since no one knew his pet was home alone, when the old man came back, his pet had actually passed away. One tip given by animal organizations besides getting to know your neighbors is to have in your keychain a tag that indicates that in case of an emergency, you have pets alone at home. This way, if you are unable to get back, someone will be aware of your pets and may be able to help out. Microchips and name tags are a must and are readily available. In fact, many animal rescues will have your new adopted pet microchip for free. If your pet is one that likes to wander around, make sure to say that in the tag. That way, no one will take your furry friend away and make it harder for him or her to come back home. Simple house storage. You may think you will have time to go to the store and buy supplies before the hurricane, thunderstorm, or any weather-related danger approaches, but you may not. Here are a couple of things you must consider. Have your car at least with half a tank of gasoline at all times. Again, you may not have time later to fill it up, like what happened in Irma in Florida or Harvey in Texas. Most gas stations had no supplies or enough gas for the demands of the people evacuating the area. Always also have water. According to FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, it's recommended to have a gallon of water per person per day. If there are children and nursing mothers, you are going to need more. Some people actually like to have water for at least a week per person, and in order to maintain it fresh, they replace it every couple of months. If you are lucky enough to have space in your basement or a closet, have supplies of dry foods like canned foods, peanut butter, and remember to have food for your furry friend as well. Ah, and remember the can opener. Calling the fire. We have been told for ages that the best way to start a fire is by using two sticks and go to town rubbing them together like there is no tomorrow or even use a piece of glass and dry leaves. But we all have cell phones, so why not call the fire to come and help you? This should only be done if your phone is waterlogged or damaged. Do not do this if there is a chance that you can get signal and call for help. After being warned, here is how you can use your cell phone to your heating advantage. Remove the battery from the phone, 
followed by placing the battery over dry tinder. Using a sharp tool like a stick, stab the battery as hard as you can and make sure to have more tinder nearby so you can control the burn. Please be careful, it can be a small fire or a nasty one. So again, last resort. How to swim on quicksand. I am sure you have seen many movies, like Princess Bride, where the princess is swallowed whole by the sand and the hero dives in and rescues her as quickly and easily. Well, that only happens in movies, but there is actually a trick that works on quicksand and it requires your quick thinking and a little knowledge on the subject. So here it is. First, if you are unfortunate enough to land on this situation, relax, you got this. Second. If you have anything pulling you down, like a backpack, get rid of it. You may have to just drop it and let it sink. The effort of swinging it far away may actually pull you further down. According to research, you are actually not going to get swallowed by the sands unless you try to swim. So stay still for just a moment and calmly lean back so there is more of your body distributed in the surface. If there is anything to pull yourself with, Please, grab it and pull yourself out. But if not, just continue leaning back and pull your legs out slowly. As slow as a snail, gently paddle backwards using small strokes so not to move the sand too much and lose buoyancy. Once you're holding to solid land, the fun continues. Since it's going to be kind of hard to get your body lifted out of the muck, try to remove your shoes with a stick. Now, if not available, just hold on tight to something and move your feet in circles very slowly so to allow more water to surround you, letting you pull them out of the quicksand an inch at a time. By the way, this is going to take some time, but it's worth your life. I eat you, I eat you not. Let's hope this does not happen to you or anyone, but if for any reason you end up in a forest and have no food, you may actually need to gamble on what to eat. Well, maybe not. Here is a general guideline on what is edible and what is not. Simply by looking at a plant, you will not be able to know if you can eat it. As a great example of a mistake, carrots look a lot like deadly plants called hemlocks. This little foe was used to execute people in the past. So, to keep yourself safe, you are going to use the universality edibility test. It's not 100%, but definitely is better than nothing. So, this is what you're going to do. Take a piece of the plant you're thinking about eating and smell it very well. Like a dog sniffing a morsel. It smells even a little repulsive to you. Do not eat it. Plants do communicate if they want to be eaten or not. Once the sniffing test is passed, then rub the plant in your wrist, the inside of your elbow, or any skin that is very sensitive. You're gonna have to give it 15 minutes for your skin to react, but if the skin reacts like a hive or a rash, then it's no good. Move on to the next one. But if not, the next step is for you to rub it in your lips, and the waiting game begins again. Survivalists do give us a very important tip. Do not ever eat a mushroom, no matter if they're being nice to you. Canned goodness. Again, you are camping and brought the waterproof matches and are far away from quicksand as well. But as soon as you're hungry and ready to open the can of baked beans to complete the meal, you realize you forgot the can opener. No worries. Just find a flat, coarse surface like a large rock, pavement, or concrete. On the top part of the can, you will notice that there is actually a seam where both pieces of aluminum connect. That's the weakest point of the can. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to stretch and warm up because for the next couple of minutes, you're going to rub that top against the flat surface until you can squeeze the sides of the can and the top will fall off. Filtering away. Let's hope this does not happen to you, but this is the scenario. You have water and the water you have is looking pretty dirty, but luckily you have some sand, stones, a charcoal grill, and a plastic bottle with you. 
we are going to purify your water wherever you are. And this is how you're going to filter the dirt away. Grab the plastic bottle and cut the bottom of it so to create a funnel. Covering the drink inside of the bottle with a couple of layers of fabric held around by a rubber band, put the capside on a small tall glass, making sure there is a space for the clean water to drip out of the bottle into the glass. So far, so easy. Now, chop the pieces of the charcoal you use in your grill and drop those in the upside down bottle. Then some sand, then some stones, and another layer of sand and stones. The idea is to create a buffer where all the dirt residues of the water will get trapped by the sand, the stones, and the charcoal. Now, this does not stop bacteria or microbes from passing. Carrying the fire with you. During a storm, it's nice to know you can lit a match if you want to get the fire started so you can warm up. Or maybe you're camping and want to get the grill going and what would you do if your matches got wet? You may not have time to let them dry and by then, the whole family may be very cold and hungry. So here is what you need to do in advance. In order to waterproof your matches, since they can be expensive to buy, just coat them with nail polish. The nail polish will create a barrier that will prevent the tip of the matches to disintegrating water. So stylishly paint them and you're now ready for action. I hope you enjoy these tips that will save your life. Remember to click the bell icon after you subscribe so you can get instant notifications of all of our new videos. I hope you found it. If you have any comments, write them below. Until next time.